started, I started on the pharmacology degree, moved over to biochemistry, and then really never looked back from that yeah. point on. So I now lecture the subject um, following a PhD here and also being actually a, a practicing scientist as well. So, um, so I've kind of been through all of the different stages yeah. that you can do really at a, at a university from undergraduate through to postgraduate PhD level. Yeah. And how did you find striking the balance between academic life and, and the rest of your life? I think it's, um, you know, as, a, as an incoming undergraduate student, certainly from leaving home, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got a lot of things to, to juggle. So you have, um, you know, obviously you're here to, to get a degree, hopefully at the, the end of your studies, but alongside that, there's so much more to university in terms of uh, friendships that you'll probably have for the, the rest of your life and also um, you know being involved in other things and, and developing yourself outside of your studies as yeah. well so, so striking that balance can be tricky because you have a lot more freedom than you've probably ever had yeah. before um, but that being said I think if you you know if you my philosophy has always been and it's what I tell our students you kind of work hard and play hard yeah. in equal measure and it, it usually it usually yeah. works out okay yeah. And in a, in a real life situation, as you're finding yourself at the moment, yeah. Anastasia, just, does that resonate with you? Uh, yeah, to, to an extent, obviously. The thing is, when you come first year university, you usually people are, um, the first time they're out, uh, out from home, like the first time in their lives, and they don't really know how to balance everything because there was your parents at home that maybe they didn't do everything for you but they yeah. certainly gave you a schedule of things to do when to eat when to do things yeah. stuff like that and suddenly you're just thrown here and kind of like i need to learn how to study be active uh go around and make friends and also mm -hmm. like kind of uh do good in university yeah, yeah. so and some people as as you said uh, are looking for part-time jobs and uh, some students are also working full-time jobs and doing a full-time course yeah i had a friend that actually did that and that is actually really really hard for a lot of students and it's really hard for them to understand when to say so i need to like yeah. kind of stop and yeah. look back yeah, yeah. Mm. and have you find it um sort of as you transition through the years have you mm. have you found it different from your experience in first year to how you're managing your time now as a fourth year student yeah i i would say that obviously a fourth year you know uh that you need to manage your time in a certain way and you know yourself better which is the main thing you know that when you're here obviously you're far from home and you need to think for yourself first of all and then in your fourth year obviously there is maybe your dissertation mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. you have to say no to some activities that you were able to do in the first three years for example for me it was easier to uh, take me off from a retail kind of job yeah. and then do a university job which allowed me more flexibility in work for example I'm doing a student ambassador which is quite flexible with, uh, with hours, things that you can't do in a retail job. Yeah. So if, especially if you're doing some things as big as your dissertation project, you'll have to uh, actually think back at what you're doing, all activities, all the sports, yeah. societies, clubs, and think, can I actually do this and not kind of lose my mind in the process. Yeah. yeah. John, you look after the S4S program at the university. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Um, so. So S4S stands for Students for Students, um, and it, it kind of it does what it says on the tin, so to speak. So, um, so it's it's a, a, a peer mentoring scheme that was set up um, a number of years ago now um, and rolled out across the pretty much the entire institution. So, um, all incoming first year undergraduate students are given a. Um, a mentor who is a fellow student within the discipline, maybe mm -hmm. within their degree discipline actually, if, if possible, um, and certainly within the, the broader discipline area. Um, and that person is there as a kind of extra level of support. So yeah. you have, you know, personal tutors who are members of staff who are support. Um, you also have, you know, lecturers who you can talk to about academic issues yeah. and so on. But this is this scheme really is is there as you know a fellow student who maybe only the year before you. Yeah was in your position yeah. as a as a you know as an incoming undergraduate and it's just a, a way of offering that extra level of support yeah. really quite light touch nothing that's meant to be too big a deal yeah. but, um, but but 
it's, it's offered to all incoming first years yeah. within you know, most of the disciplines. And I'd say that's very valuable support to a student where you, you know, there is pressure on students to, to take part in co-curricular um, activities, mm -hmm. to have part-time work to, to further enhance their academic experience. So that it's, it's great that we, we're able to offer them that level of support. Yeah. What tips would you give students, John, uh, from your, your many years of experience um, on how to find a balance in their life at university? Um, I think, it, I mean, it, it's a, a little bit like you were saying, that it's, it's having a, a kind of self-awareness of if things are starting to take over a little yeah. bit. And, um, and certainly if, if you can... Um, plan your time effectively I think that's something I've seen for a lot of our students so not just myself but yeah. other students that we've seen going through our degrees um, and by doing that you actually can kind of sit down and reflect on what it is you're doing you know week in week out and if you can do that both from an academic point of view in terms of your your studies but also um, all of the other things that you might be involved yeah. with it could be your your work outside a university yeah. to um, to earn money or it could be you know societies or clubs or anything else that you're involved yeah. with and being able to kind of you know work through that and work out what you're going to do meet your own deadlines or deadlines for courses etc yeah. um, and if you can do that then you can begin to start to pick apart where you know the, there may be some things that are starting to take over because it yeah. is it really is about a balance you know and yeah. I think your, your studies will look after themselves if the rest of your life is, is kind of okay, yeah. you know, and, you, and you're actually, you're being able to strike that balance effectively without one, one or the other taking over too much. Yeah. Um, Anastasia, did you have any um, experiences about struggling when you were trying to find that balance? How, oh, how did yeah, you overcome absolutely. those struggles? Absolutely. Like, um, first year, especially, in first year, I think you kind of lose focus that you're in university especially first week yeah. you're there there's so much things happening and you want to take part in everything mm -hmm. and then at some point you have a deadline and you're like oh it's in three days yeah <laughs> and you don't really know what to do mm -hmm. so you kind of have to like actually take a look at your course and actually write down deadlines and everything yeah because it's it's gonna build up and it's gonna be like at the end of october maybe half november and you're pretty much settle in all the other things you know how to cook yourself a meal you have friends but you completely forgot <laughs> that university was a thing yes so yeah. i would suggest that um yes people need to kind of focus on the fact that they are in university as well yeah. yes freshers week is amazing and there is a lot of things happening yeah but also take a take your time to uh, maybe like uh, study your textbook, uh, talk to your lecturer, talk to your personal tutor as well, because yeah. they offer a lot of insight as well in what is actually mean to be university and studying and helping yourself study. Yeah. Even if you are kind of like a zero procrastinator kind of thing, or you don't really like feel like studying because you're having so much fun. Yeah. We, um, we spoke to Alex from the Students Association earlier and we were talking about the importance of self-care um, and I think that that comes into this, uh, this conversation and you know, the, the, the key message that I'm taking from you both is about planning and I think it's important to plan that into your schedule as well. What do you, what do you guys do? To, to, to make time for yourselves. Now, um, what time? <laughs> or as what a student. Yeah. Um, certainly as a, um, as a student, I think it was a case of, you know, I, trying to be, I suppose trying to be a good student. I never, I, sorry, I nearly said I never was a good student. But, <laughs> I don't um, believe I, that. No, exactly. So, um, so it's, it's really more that, you know, you, for the most part, you, you kind of you enjoy yourself. You, you really get stuck into your studies which hopefully are enjoyable as well because you've chosen yeah. this degree program and um, and it's it's about really being able to um, to plan ahead a little bit and be able to kind of be reasonably confident that you you don't have deadlines that appear you know yeah. three days before they're due and yeah. things like this and if you get things done relatively early it allows you to to find the time for the other things i mean it can be a challenge especially if you've got a, a job and other things and other commitments outside yeah. of, of university so um but as i say being able to to really think about how you're going to you know the next week two weeks three weeks ahead yeah um get your studies sorted it means that you do have often then time that 
appears from nowhere because you, yeah. you've sort of um, you've optimised your time as yeah. much as you can do yeah. without getting too, you know, caught yeah. up in, in spending all your time planning as well. That's yeah. the other thing to, to watch out for. Yeah. Well, I think that's some great advice for our students and uh, for any first year students that are available. Where might they find more information about the S for S scheme? Um, so the Students for Students scheme is uh, is on the university website. So okay. if you um, look at uh, in the, the search box at the top of the page, you should yep. be able to put in S4S and it should miraculously appear. Brilliant. If that doesn't work, then um, it's uh, abdn.ac.uk forward slash S4S, I believe should work okay as well. Great. Um, and you'll find out about who the staff are involved in it and contact details for finding out about the scheme. Great. Thank you so much both of you for Thank your you time much. today and uh, enjoy the rest of the fair. I hope you manage to take some time to go and have a look around and see the support that's Absolutely. available to yeah. you. So thanks very yeah. much. Thank you. Okay. So as I said, uh, there's a whole range of activities happening this week um, uh, during Be Well Week. Tomorrow um, will be the Physical Health Day and we'll be hearing a little bit later from Kyle Gregg from Aberdeen Sports Village um, about ways to, to look after your health and well-being. Be Well um, is an initiative that has been set up by the university to look after students and staff's uh, well-being and we have a series of events running throughout the year um, giving you um, information about different ways of supporting your, your health and well-being. Um, the fair today has been really, really well attended from, by students and we're delighted to have so many people um, along with us. And um, I'm delighted now to welcome um, to the sofa um, Steve Tucker. Uh, who is one of our personal tutors and um, Gemma Murdoch <laughs> from Student Support. Um, so, Steve, you are uh, you also are a lifer at the University of Aberdeen, yeah, and yeah, you, Gemma. Yeah. 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 Right. So, um, tell me a little bit about your journey um, into to university. And I think what we're what we're going to focus on now is about the sort of support that is available to students, both academically and non-academically. So. From your experience as a student, have things changed, Steve? Uh, yeah, I, th I think there's there's a lot of things have changed. Um, in fact, Gemma and I were just discussing off air um, how there are increased pressures in terms of money and stress and things yeah. like that on. Uh, the, the, this generation of students and indeed future generations um, and so I think that the university as a whole has really upped its game in terms of the support that's available yeah. to meet that need um, and I think now that we're attracting an increasingly diverse population of students from all over the world from all sorts of different backgrounds there's a need to um, expand our support and intensify our yeah. support so that all students needs are met and their expectations are met and it allows them to really come here within a supportive community network and, and really blossom yeah. um, under the, the, the various support yeah. mechanisms and the academic support that they, yeah. they get. So you both have a very different but similar remits. Um, Steve, you're, you're from the academic um, side of things, so can you tell me a little bit about the personal tutoring um, network and, and what, what is that? What is that for a student? So the, the, the personal tutor, so every uh, incoming student will be assigned a, a personal tutor who is an academic member of staff from within their school um, and that role is about supporting not only some of the academic needs of the student but also a lot of the pastoral needs as well so mm -hmm. not only encouraging students to make the best of their time at university but if things do get challenging being yeah. able to support them and to point them to the appropriate uh, support service to, to allow them to overcome any challenges or issues and then continue along the, yeah. the, the road to academic success. But what I would say is that the personal tutor isn't just there if there are challenges or issues that arise. Indeed, the personal tutor should be there to discuss all aspects around graduate attributes, which are the kind of skill set that okay. we want to embed within our students. So when they graduate, they are able to offer society and their chosen career path the yeah. maximum. But also to encourage students to engage with things like the co-curriculum, which are academic activities that can be taken alongside their Mm -hmm. uh, everyday courses and also extracurricular things associated with societies and communities yeah. and clubs that we have established very much here at the university so that they can really not just benefit academically from their time here but in much broader yeah. terms 
and they can become much more active yeah. citizens along the way as well. It sounds fantastic so you know that we really have a great support network for our students so that they they can fulfill their best yeah, potential yeah, at university. For sure, for sure. Gemma the support that you offer through the student support and advice office is, is a little bit different to that so can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yep so we're based on the top floor of the Students Union building we're part of the wider Student Support Services Network um, also made up by the, the chaplaincy, the counselling service and the residence assistants in halls so we're a team of advisors and support staff there to support students with literally any query that they might have um, and I think I think what I was saying to Steve, our ethos is, is generally that if a student has a query or a concern or something that they're struggling with, access support regardless of which service they're accessing. Yeah. Um, we work quite closely with the Info Hub, yeah. with the personal tutors, the student learning service, assistive technology, lots of support services across the university. Um, every member of staff is a support service at yeah. the university. Yeah, that's, that's what we're here true. is ultimately yeah. to support our students to, to get a good degree, to get a good job at the end of it, but also to really enjoy themselves yeah. when they're here. Um, so in student advice and support we've got a team of um, four different types of advisor and we specialise in lots of different areas so from our students with disabilities, students with mental health issues, mm -hmm. um, financial queries as well as just queries about how to get through university yeah. I'm struggling a little bit. We run a duty advisor drop-in service now so from 9am through to 4.30 every day of the week there will be an advisor available to answer any query that comes yeah. through the door. Um, so it really is just a case of highlighting that there are lots of people available to help yeah. and even if we're not necessarily the specialist service for you, we'll know who to send yeah. you to. It sounds like there's a really personal um, service available to, to students at the, the university. Do the, do the personal tutoring system and, and student advice kind of work together at all and is there... We do work closely together. I think, I think the thing to highlight though to our students is that we run a confidential service. Yeah. So if a student is having an issue or they have a disability or there's a medical condition, they can come and speak to us in detail about that yeah. in confidence, but we won't necessarily share details of any issue that they're having okay. with the academic staff. We do have a very good relationship with them. And if the student would like us to share details of their concerns or their yeah. issues, we can work with the personal tutors on that. Yeah. But in some cases, a student would prefer that to be kept confidential. Yeah. And I think it's important that students know that they can come to a service yeah. and we won't necessarily share details yeah. of any concerns that they have with the academic staff. Yeah. But we'll make sure that they're getting the support in the background yeah. and we'll speak to the staff who thankfully trust our judgment. Mm -hmm. um, so if a student needs a little bit of extra time, yeah. some leeway on um, assignments, lots of different things that we can work with in terms yeah. of provisions both from a disability and um, personal issues perspective. Yeah. So we do work closely but at the same time there is that divide to make sure that mm -hmm. you know, students do know that there is a confidentiality yeah. there. Yeah. How does a student get the most out of, the pers out of personal tutoring? So, so the, the way that the personal tutoring system is designed is that as students um, either enter the university for the first time or when they return um, after the summer holidays, uh, they should always have an appointment available to meet their personal tutor. Mm -hmm. Now in first year that's done automatically. Um, through the senior personal tutor, so incoming students will receive an email to that effect telling them at uh, what time to be in what building and their personal tutor will be there to meet them. Yeah. Uh, returning students, their individual personal tutor should contact them to set up that meeting. And really that meeting is just about setting the scene for um, what's expected of you at university if it's your, your, your first personal tutor meeting or if you're a returning student, it's about discussing how the previous year went and what kind of changes and what kind of expectations are involved in the, the coming year. There's an opportunity to discuss things like study techniques, things like exam marks or exam preparation or various opportunities that are maybe specifically available in the coming year as well. So the, the, the student should engage with those initial meetings just to kind of start the term and the year, the academic year off in, in the right foot. Yeah. Throughout the year though, there are other meetings that are arranged at different times, so I think there's normally one on the approach to the exam period to discuss any exam preparations, any concerns about exams or um, the way in which the coursework has gone, etc. And then there's a, a follow-up meeting early in the, 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 the spring term to discuss the outcome of the exams and, and how to go about the preparation mm -hmm. for the next yep. uh, set of exams. But really, those 
I guess allotted meetings are, are, are not what the personal tutoring service is all about because any kind of issue or any kind of opportunity that you want to discuss with your personal tutor, just drop them an email okay. or talk to them in class because you will be talking to these people in class as they will be teaching you throughout your degree. So do approach your personal tutor on an ad hoc basis whenever there's anything that you want to discuss okay. and that personal tutor will be there to either help you address that concern, help you achieve whatever it is you need to achieve, or indeed send you in the right direction to seek the appropriate specialist support from some of our yeah. central team. So the message is a student never needs to worry about where to go for support because there's lots of routes for yeah, them yeah. to get yeah. the support. And I think the important thing is all of those routes are, are well integrated. Yes. So, you know, they, they're all aligned so that we can, you know, we can, we yeah. can discuss anything with Great. them. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the fair and uh, we'll let you make way now for my next guest, uh, who is Kyle Gregg, who is from Aberdeen Thanks, Sports Kyle. Village. Um, Kyle is a, a very busy gentleman, um, father to a 10-week-old baby, um, an ultra runner who's competed um, for Scotland and is uh, the, the corporate development manager at um, Aberdeen Sports Village. And we're going to be talking a little bit to Kyle about um, how to maintain a healthy body um, and the importance of that um, on uh, your university life. Um, just to remind um, students uh, that tomorrow, Wednesday, there will be an open day at Aberdeen Sports Village for all of our staff and students to go along and sample the facilities. Um, it's a brand new state-of-the-art gym, which I'm sure Kyle will tell us a little bit uh, about now. So, Kyle, thanks so much Hi, for Kyle. joining me. Yeah, thank you um, for having uh, me on. Yeah. Fine, I'm yeah. fine. And you're awake. Uh, the baby's not keeping you up all the, night, the, the all baby, the time. The, the baby has been keeping me awake. Okay. But, um, but you know, intermittent intermittently which is which is good, good. Um, you know every two hours or so um, yeah I'm, I'm having to get up but my wife is on maternity leave so she's doing uh, a lot of the, the midnight work okay. and the overnight work so so you're in uh, the support role I am yeah yeah <laughs> very but, good uh, oh, it's a great you know I wouldn't change it for no while, anyway no yeah. so tell me a little bit about how you balance your work life your personal life and your 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 uh, your sporting life and how, how would that translate for a student? Um, yeah, well, I, I think it's quite important, you know, for, for me, I mean, I, I was a student and, uh, you know, I had the same the same challenges to, to make, uh, you know, this is going back 15 years ago or something. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I had to balance, you know, working, um, you know, studying and going to lectures and, and also training, but also socialising as well. Yeah. Was, I find, you know, as a student, extremely difficult. If I was to rewind, rewind back, um, I would do things probably quite a lot differently. What um, would you do differently? I think I, I was quite disorganised when it came to my student life, you know, I was working yeah. about, in order for me to, um, just to pay, you know, just to keep, keep pay my rent and um, I had to work about 30 hours a week yeah. and, and, you know, coupled with, yeah, coming to university, 30 hours and yep. plus in terms of studying. Um, I, yeah, I, I, find, I find it really difficult yeah. uh, just, to, just to do that. And one of the things that I now do uh, differently because I'm, I'm working full time um, training, trying to train like a full time athlete, yeah. which is quite challenging. Um, I mean, you know, the full time athletes probably do a lot more um, maintenance work, like yeah. foam rolling, stretching, yoga. I do a little bit of that, but I like yeah. to run more often. Um, so, yeah, I find just that as well as. Um, uh, yeah, socialising, mm -hmm. that's probably less priority, yeah. um, but family life comes first yeah. and, and health comes yeah. first, and then it's work, uh, then it's running, so yeah. trying to almost prioritise exactly yeah. what's, what's important first yeah. um, and make sure you do that well, yeah. and then things can hopefully cascade after yeah. that. So just for me, prioritising plus just having a calendar yeah. to, to work, work against and you know, that calendar doesn't have to be rigid. Mm -hmm. It can, you know, you'll have to adapt it. And, yeah. and that, you know, every week it is adaptable and, and yeah. I have to change things about yeah. and it seems to work really well. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think, and that's certainly the, things. when we were speaking to John and yeah. Anastasia earlier on, that came across very strongly yeah. that the key to managing your life is to plan yeah. um, and that's really important. Yeah. Um, so not everybody is going to be as uh, athletic as you are. Um, but it's important for you to look after your 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 physical yeah. health at university. So, 
What would you say to any student who's maybe not wanting to compete competitively, or but how can they they make small steps looking after their well-being? It's a really really good question. I mean, you know, I, I say you know I, I exercise to perform well at a high level, but I also exercise so that I can perform better at every other element of my mm -hmm. life and. To have a healthy body means you're going to have a healthy, potentially a healthy mind as yeah. well. Because exercise and mental health, you know, they, they work really well yeah. together. Yeah. Um, so for me, having the ability to, to go out and do just any something moderate, even, and that really does wake your body up. And even you, walking. Just walking, yeah, just walking. I mean, if you're, I don't know, some students might live, you know, at Hillhead. I don't know if there's a bus service anymore. Yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> but you know, I mean, maybe yeah. some if you're in town. But uh, walk, just walk to work, walk yeah. to university, and um, and you'll you'll feel a lot more alert when it comes yeah. to your lectures. Because I find, you know, I was taking the bus, and this is you know, this is me being a runner back then. I was yeah. taking the bus yeah. uh, from Hillhead, and I was getting to the lecture and really drowsy and bit moderate exercise, or just go for a run, or go to the gym before. Mm -hmm. A lecture really will wake you up and yeah. make you feel a lot better about yourself. And you know, not only will you feel more awake, you'll feel more alert, you'll take more information in. You're also going to feel you're going to start having a healthier body as yeah. well, and, and you're going to start seeing the the benefits of that yeah. too um, yeah. when it comes to exercise yeah. consistently over a period of time. Yeah. yeah. So um, we are so lucky to have the sports village across the road from the main campus in Old Aberdeen, um, and you've just had a massive gym refurbishment. We have, yeah, um, yeah been, which I, I'm exciting. ashamed to say I haven't been in to see the well, gym. <laughs> I'll yet. be looking out for you. Then. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell me, tell me a little bit about the facilities and why why is ASV such a good place to for a student to uh, look after their their body it's a really good question again um, <laughs> now when i was at university i wasn't lucky enough to have a facility like aberdeen sports village now we did have a facility at butcher yeah um, smaller gym we still had a swimming pool there but aberdeen sports village um, it's got a, an aquatic center it's got a 50 meter pool olympic size 10 lanes it's got a 25 meter pool it's got diving platforms uh, it's got a sauna and steam room as well if you want to just chill out. Nice. Um, and then on the, the dry side, you've got a sports centre, uh, you've got the sports hall, so you can play lots of different games, badminton, yeah. table tennis, uh, it's part of your membership. You can also use athletics track, so yeah. you can use outdoor track, you can use an indoor track, um, and uh, squash courts as well, that's part of your membership, you yeah. can use them. Uh, you've got the the gym as well yeah uh, I'm, try, I'm gonna i'm gonna slip up and forget something is that big what about enough? the spin studio the spin studio yeah. we've got a brand new boutique <laughs> which uh, i love i go spins. there every thursday morning. yeah i've actually just come, come from a class oh, that you? i teach at <laughs> quarter past 12 yeah. on a tuesday there's a little plug for anyone who there fancies coming along <laughs> um a half an hour class mm -hmm. high intensity but there's lights it's a really small intimate class mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit dark as well you know yeah. it's um which you know for me, anyway, it covers up the sweat that I produce. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it's really good. Lots of classes on the timetable. Just go online and you can see all the classes that, and that the, take place. The, the, what well. time is the Sports Village open? So, because obviously students have a busy teaching yeah. Um, yeah. schedule, so is it easy for them to? Yeah, yeah. Again, um, so we're open from half five in the morning, Monday to Friday. Okay. Um, the weekends it's a little bit later, mm -hmm. um, and then we close a little bit earlier yeah. uh, on the on the weekend. Yeah. But we're open until half ten when it comes to the, the weekdays, yeah. so plenty of opportunity and time to, to, yeah. to work out. So I haven't got to the gym yet though, you know, I'm really excited by this. Now, me being a runner, yeah. I'm guilty like you yeah. of, uh, of actually not, not getting into, into that and using it as much as I can. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, this is the third re refurbishment and you know, we've been, Abney Sports Village is, yeah. is now 10 years old and, um, and it's, we're really lucky enough to be yeah. able to have uh, to invest money into the, yeah. the gym and, and, and really make it such a diverse gym now. You know, anyone from who wants to do bodybuilding to yeah. who wants to train for a marathon to who, anyone who wants to just get generally generally fit as well. Uh, cyclists out there, we've got a, fun, a new functional rig. It's called yeah. the Queen Axe. It's the yeah. biggest one in Scotland. It's absolutely massive. It's fancy lights, lots of different exercises yeah. you can do on it. Um, and we're lucky Sounds enough. great. Yes, yeah, yeah, we've got uh, stair climbers as well. So anyone who doesn't want to climb, clamber up the stairs yeah. in their office, you can just climb up yeah. these, you know, moving stairs, great. which is pretty cool and a really good workout as well. Um, That's great. And uh, yeah, just it's really it's integrated with thing, you know, entertainment yeah. systems like Netflix and all oh, that. It's fab. So anyone who wants to watch Netflix and wants to exercise at the same time, 
so you can to the gym kill two birds with one stone. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking your time out of your very busy schedule today to talk to me, um, Kyle. That's great. And for um, anybody that wants to go along, as I said, tomorrow, um, Aberdeen Sports Village is open for students to come um, along and try the facilities for free um, to go in and, and try these new uh pieces of equipment that Kyle um, was talking about. Um, so that's open all day tomorrow. Our next guests um, are Alex Johnson from the Rowett Institute and Mark Donovan, who is one of the, the um, executive chefs at the University of Aberdeen. So uh, just welcome Mark onto the sofa and Alex is just getting mic'd up. Mark, do you want to tell me a little bit about your um, your background um, prior to coming to the university? And yeah, I've worked for nearly 20 years in, uh, oh, worked in hotels and restaurants. Um, worked at the... Hi, Alex. Hi, Karen. How are you? I'm good. Good. Yeah, I worked at the Markleff Hotel, uh, the Milton the Kratis, um Square Restaurant. Yeah. So quite a bit of exposure there. And Alex, you um, do a lot of work with the, well, your work at the Rowett, and um, I think the, the Better For You range uh, so, was one of your projects um, with Marks and yeah, Spencers. So it was, it's Balance For You. Balance yeah, For You, so, sorry. Yeah, so that's based on my uh, research, and that was launched in 2009 with Marks yeah. and Spencers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Alex, what would be your top tips for students about um, how they can, uh, through their diet, look after their, a healthy body and a healthy mind? So I think, first of all, it, it's important to say that nutrition is incredibly important so yeah. um, for um, prevention of diseases but also we know that um, you know having good nutrition and good hydration means that we feel more energized mm -hmm. uh, we feel a, a better sense of well-being yeah. so first tip would be um, planning within your budget so really thinking about um, what options that are available on campus and yeah. where some of the deals are to get yeah. the most out of the, the budget that you have mm -hmm. and really embracing um, a varied diet so not just yeah. sticking to the, the things that are maybe easier to cook if you're time limited yeah. but thinking and planning ahead so that you get that balance yeah. of nutrients of protein f healthy fats carbohydrates which includes dietary fibre mm -hmm. for really um, important for gut health mm -hmm. and thinking about as well calorie needs and of course I'm not missing out alcohol, alcohol <laughs> does contribute towards calories but it's not one of the essential nutrients, no. it's good to have fun but uh, you know everything in moderation I suppose. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So I think students uh, and people in general are becoming much more aware of what they're eating. Mark, have you had to make any um, adjustments to the menus when you're planning um, the, for, for all of the outlets on campus? Yeah, certainly a lot of the feedback that we've had from students is they're looking for uh, more healthy living dishes. Um, and of course, at the food court, we've got the Healthy Living Award there that we've had for, I think, the last seven years. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and one of the other things, that they're looking for a lot more vegan and vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Um, options yeah um, and certainly we've managed to accommodate that we've got roots at the food court yeah that uh, is very popular yeah um, I think most of the other outlets apart from Sgt Peppers have a, a vegetarian option available each day that's fantastic Alex that's a, a key part of your research at the moment so can you tell us a little bit about that about plant-based yeah so food I, you know, I can reflect on that myself because I'm vegetarian so I always go for the vegetarian choices when I'm uh, eating on campus and I have to say there's always a good choice for me so yeah I'm interested in um, protein and um, for health reasons and for sustainability reasons yeah. we're really transitioning more from a meat-based diet so red meat and we would into, include poultry and fish from that more onto a plant-based diet for health reasons so including alternative sources of protein of which there are many we can include the dairy we can include the traditional peas beans and legumes um, there's cereal products so mm -hmm. And that's incredibly important to maintain our muscle mass. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my research at the Rowett Institute is looking at the relationship between diet and health mm -hmm. and looking at how high protein diets can fulfill uh, making you feel fuller for longer or indeed when we're working with older age groups. Yeah. And um, the 
the research that you've been doing, Alex, um, you know, talks about the time when we eat and, and uh, what what would you recommend there about breakfast for students? Yes. Okay, so this is quite a new science. So it's what we're thinking about is not just um, what you eat in terms of calories; it's also when you eat might impact on appetite and energy balance. And I'm very much uh, aware that. You know, um, when I give nine o'clock lectures, sometimes the class isn't as full as it okay. should be. So mm -hmm. uh, perhaps some people are having a lie in. But if you are on the go and, and getting in on time, then breakfast is such an important part mm. of a healthy diet to um, break the overnight fast, as it suggests, and also important for cognition and getting a source of energy. Yeah. So, um, the research that we're doing are all research diets looking at a big breakfast, a small dinner and a small breakfast and a big dinner and that's some of our ongoing work that we'll be uh, reporting next year. So that's a new science called chrononutrition which is really exciting to be in science that's evolving and yeah. you know what, there's an awful lot we don't know about nutrition, mm -hmm. about how the human body responds to different nutrients. So yeah. It's a great time to be involved in that. Yeah. And you, there's a there's a clear correlation between what people eat and their brain functionality yeah, and their so productivity. I think um, um, we can recognise that the gut is sometimes called the, the second brain, actually. So it's the interaction between the food and the gut and the brain is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And that's particularly linking the gut bacteria. So what we eat is can be an energy source for the gut bacteria and promote the growth of that positive gut bacteria okay. which can then feed back to the brain so it's quite a complex system but we know it's bi-directional yeah. so the brain feeds the gut and um, the gut feeds the brain so things like eating um, fiber is particularly important mm. to impact not only on transit time but also that growth of the the good bacteria yeah. so. Well, we're very lucky then that you'll translate all of this into what we eat yes. and what's on offer um, in, in the likes of the food court. So what, what sort of plant-based dishes would regularly feature um, on campus? At, at Roots, I think uh, we've got quite a wide range there. Some of the popular ones are the burgers that we do. So the quinoa and courgette burgers are a very popular one. Yeah. Uh, the falafel burger that we do, yeah. Um, yeah, again, very popular. Um, flatbread sell really well. Um, and then we've got a couple of other stews, there's uh, uh, and a lentil shepherd's pie uh, was on today yeah. at Roots, again very popular. Yeah. And would you, between you, not to put you on the spot, would it, what if um, you were saying a quick five minutes um, healthy meal to prepare if somebody didn't have time, store cupboard ingredients, mm -hmm. what, what sort of things should you be looking to put in to? So, so I suppose my um, quick meal is always soup. Soup. So opening up um, either one of the fridge-based soups or a can of soup and some wholemeal bread. Yep. Particularly on the weather, it's not so good today, is it? It's no, misty. it's pretty... So, well, it's quite heartwarming and kind yeah. of a really rich source of fibre if you yeah. choose um, one of the soups with peas, beans and legumes in it. So okay. that's my sort of quick go-to, particularly at lunchtime. Yeah. So. What about you, Mark? Um, well, last night, for instance, a home busy family. So we had a um, gnocchi with um, uh, it was tender stem broccoli, peas, oh, uh, lemon juice, a bit of creme fraiche. Yeah. You know, by the time the, the gnocchi's cooked, everything's done. It's ready. Ten minutes. Ready and I think there's a misconception that a plant-based diet is much more expensive, um, that, mm -hmm. but it's not not the case. I don't think that you can find these ing and, and difficult to find. You can find the ingredients quite readily available in most supermarkets. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, you know, supermarkets and suppliers have had to respond to, to the demand that's out yeah. there. Um, products are a lot, a lot more readily available. Certainly from our suppliers, we're noticing that um, sources have been changed so that uh, once yeah. upon a time where they would have had uh, you know, a meat product within it, this is vegetarian if not vegan yeah. now. Um, we've also noticed that there's a big change to like the flexitarian diet. Yeah. Where you've got people that aren't necessarily vegans or vegetarians mm -hmm. who want to adopt that lifestyle. Yeah. So, yeah. But taking different alt different options mm -hmm. rather than always going for the traditional yep. mm -hmm. thing. So what's next on the, the cards for the Rowett? What's the, 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 the main research that you're focusing on at the moment? So um, a lot of my research is tackling the consequences of overnutrition, which is mainly obesity. So yeah. um, 
at the moment uh, I'm sticking with the colonial nutrition theme and I'll be probably thinking about time restricted feeding and yeah. how, how we can design diets that match uh, people's um, sort of uh, physiology and behaviour and understanding that one diet doesn't really fit all and need a, a range of yep. options to, to fit the population. Yeah, so. yeah. Great. So if you were if you were going to take Alex to lunch now, <laughs> which of the outlet, which of the, the, uh, the restaurants on well, campus Well, we were did talking before her? we came on. Oh, and, were you? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Alex hasn't been to Roots. So oh, have you not? We're, we're no, not yet. Now. It's no. very, very good. Uh-huh. It's very good. It's, uh, it's, sometimes you'll, you feel spoilt for choice. You know, it's, as a vegetarian, you'll know you uh-huh. usually just have the one or two yes. options, but uh-huh. uh, it's spoilt for choice. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us um, on the sofa today. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, session from the Bee Welfare at the University of Aberdeen. Um, as I said, there's loads of things happening throughout the week um, uh, this week, so do check out the Student Life uh, uh, Facebook page for details of all of the events that you can get involved in throughout the week. Thanks.